So thank you very much to the scientific committee for the opportunity to talk, for the organizers of the business conference, for all of you for actually being here. So, ah, I didn't All right. Okay. Sorry about this. Okay, so this talk is about higher categories in dimension two. However, I really consider this the stepping stone for uh, probably a bigger story in higher dimension. So as we know, there are several combinatorial machineries that encode the idea of weak to categories. I will concentrate on two of them. One is weakly global double categories introduced by Prompt and myself, which is a full subcategory of strict double categories. One is a failed two categories, a model introduced some years ago by Joachim Koch as a model of by categories with strictly associative composition law, but we can't. Now, both of these models have been independently shown to be suitably equivalent to by categories. What I present today is a direct comparison between them and proof of their equivalence. In itself, this is not a surprising result in the sense that both of them, we know already they are equivalent by categories. But the point of what I'm talking about is that uh, it's a direct comparison that <coughs> does not depend at all on the equivalence of each of these models made by categories. And the techniques of this work are sufficiently general that I think they offer a good potential for high dimensional generalization. The point of this would be, when this would be achieved, that there is a dimension and version of categorical globulat, with globular and for categories that do satisfy the Nodupi hypothesis, and I presented this work back in 2019 in Edinburgh. And there is a model fair and categories, which is a minimally weak model of higher categories. We have heard about this idea of minimally weak models in similar talks, John Bull, uh, Virginia Chen. So doing this work for higher head would constitute a proof of a version of the Simpsons Wikileaks conjecture. This is not what I'm doing now, but it's a stepping stone towards that. So we are giving this as motivation. A few preliminary basic things. Uh, we have a nerve function from internal categories in a category C with pullbacks to simplicial object in C. A simplicial object in C is the nerve of an internal category if and only if all the single maps are isomorphism. So we define a weekly global double category as a simplicial object in CAT in which, first of all, all the single maps are isomorphic. So we are talking about an internal category in CAT. So all my double categories here are strict double categories. The second condition says that X0, which you can think of as category of objects and vertical arrows, is an equivalence relation. So we have an equivalence between X0 and the discrete category of the set of connected components of X0, which are denoted by X0D. The third condition, you look at this map, which is induced by this map gamma. Okay, so here is the iterated pullback of X1 over X0 with the source and target maps. Here, we post, uh, compose this uh, source and target map to the map. Uh, gamma. So this is a factor between categories for all k big and equal to 2. We ask that this factor is an equivalent of categories. So how do we think about the structure? You want to think about the uh, connected components of a 0 as set of objects. You want to think about x1 as category of arrows and two cells. So what is the purpose of this condition? It's the one that regulates the coherent behavior of uh, the compositions. And you don't see in this model explicitly the coherent axioms because they are automatically embedded in the combinatorics of the structure. And Proc and myself showed that this is to be equivalent to by categories. But as I said, this is not the direction in which I want to go. Okay, so now we leave it here for a moment, and I want to now introduce the Koch model of fair two categories. To do this, I need to, to recall uh, what uh, Joachim calls the fat delta. So I'm going to adopt a slightly different definition of the fat delta, although this was mentioned.
mention in this paper, uh, but I'm going to actually give uh, some more details about it. I believe this is a very interesting category, even independently of the work that I presented today. So I want to give a bit of a and at this conference about the fat delta. So first you consider the category of epimorphism in delta, whose objects are the epimorphism and whose morphisms are the computing squares in delta like this. The fat delta is similar in that the objects are epimorphism, but for morphism you look at the commuting squares in which the top map is a monomorphism. So, presented in this way, this uh, does not carry a lot of intuition. So, in order to make sense of this, I will first give a slightly different description of the category of epimorphism in delta. So, remember that we can think of the ordinal n as a category. So, if you have an epimorphism in delta from n prime to n, this identifies a wide subcategory of n prime. So, a subcategory with the same set of objects but in which we say there is a map from i to j, if and only if, <coughs> bit of i to bit of j. So the pair of this uh, category n prime with this white subcategory, sometimes people call these pairs relative categories, but just the name, we call this a colored ordinal. Yeah? And the colored arrows are the arrows of the white subcategory, and we depict them as links. So for instance, you have this epimorphism from 2 to 1, the color arrow is the map from 0 to 1. What do we do with this? Well, now let's think about the uh, commuting diagrams that give you the epimorphism in uh, the morphism, sorry, the morphism in AP delta. Well, this amounts to say that if you think down of this epimorphism as a colored category, the color ordinal, Colored arrows are sent to colored arrows. So we can say that epimorphism in delta is the same as the category of non-empty colored ordinals and color preserving maps between them. <coughs> okay, so that's uh, for empty delta, but remember we want to actually understand this one, which has this monomorphism at the top. So in order to use this uh, description now of empty delta in terms of color ordinal to better understand this, we need to remind the notion of semi-category. A semi-category is like a category but without identities. So it's morphism like this, where this map satisfies the usual axioms. We can also think about the white subcategory of delta consisting of all the monomorphisms. And this is also morphic to the category of finite non-empty semi-ordinal, where a semi-ordinal is a semi-category associated with a finite total strict order relation. And a semi-category is the same thing as a phantom from delta mono of n to set in which the single maps are isomorphic. If we go back to the picture, for the case of the simplicial delta, I just you know, you take this picture and you just forget about all these degeneracy maps, and then you do the semi nerve or the semi category And you can do this internally in, uh, in NEC. Now, let's put together what uh, the ideas we've been discussing. On the one hand, we have this category described as color non empty semi ordinal, so it's called color non empty ordinal. Here, we can say that fat delta corresponds to category of color non-empty semi-ordinals and color preserving maps. This is how originally Koch uh, presents the fat delta. Now, this description is more intuitive, but uh, it turns out that for many of the technical proofs, <coughs> this definition is easier to work with. So this is what I'm going to adopt throughout uh, this talk today. I also remark that we have a uh, map from the fat delta to the ordinary delta that is just taking the targets of these objections. Okay, and this will be important later. I need a few more technical things before introducing fair to categories. One is that we have an embedding of the delta mono into fat delta. We have two embeddings. One, the horizontal embedding that says if you have a semi-ordinal n, you just take a uh, the identity on n, and the vertical embedding, you just take the unique subjection into zero. 
work. And then this is what happens on the maps. It's completely obvious. So in terms of uh, the picture, in terms of color semi-ordinal, in the horizontal embedding, nothing is colored. In the vertical embedding, all the hairs are colored. And I will very often omit writing H, and this should cause no confusion. Why do I mention this? Because what we really need to do now is to think about an analog of the notion of seagull now. If you have now a photo from fat delta up into C, because fat categories are phantos from fat delta up into cat, satisfying additional conditions. Well, fortunately, the combinatorics of the single maps is very similar to the one of the simplicial delta. Let's think about a K in this horizontal, uh, horizontal uh, in the image of, in the central image of this horizontal phanto, so I, I just said I eliminate the notation K. Well, this is the usual single map because all these maps are actually induced by maps in delta mono, so nothing surprising here. What if now we look at uh, something which is, uh, apologies, that something which is the image of this vertical embedding. Remember, this vertical embedding was a unique subjection into zero, right? So you can think of this diagram as consisting of, uh, so how the direction go, uh, uh, so the target would be, uh, would be a diagram like this, and the source would be zero, and so it's quite intuitive that you have a single map like this, so uh, when you have this V here, you get uh, a pullback of X of V of 1 over X of 0. But this is not the general case. So in general, uh, an object of the fat delta, we think of it as a colored semi-ordinal, so a sequence of dots that are not links and dots that are linked. You know, something like this. So to make sense of this, we need a notation. Well, this is a very easy way to handle this because Think about an epimorphism in, uh, in delta, right? So you look at those places in the target in which the plane <coughs> under this uh, eta has a size bigger than one, and so we have the links. The length of these links is this size minus one, and so you keep track of the length of the places which are not linked and the ones that are linked, and you can see that you have a map like this. Right? So whenever you have things that are not linked, you have the horizontal, uh, uh, horizontal maps, and here you have the vertical maps. So if you put together this map with the ones of this slide, what you take is a map, we call our single map from x eta to a very long pullback of either x1 over x0 or x3 of 1 over x0. And I'm not going to write everything on one slide, but let's look at an example. Right? So you have this epimorphism, and here you have the single map from here, and you see that you have a length of a link of length two here, so two copies of x v of one. You have three dots that are not linked, so you have three copies of x1, and you have one final link here, so one copy of x of v of one. And you can see how this works in general. So, single maps exist for phantoms from fat delta of A to cat, A to C. Finally, I can give you the definition of fair to categories. So, first of all, we think of uh, fat delta as a colored category. So, a category with a white subcategory. The colored arrows are the ones that are sent to identities by this projection pi. And category is a color categories where the color arrows are the equivalences of categories. So we say, so that's the definition of Koch, a fair to category is a color preserving phantom from fat delta of into cat. What does color preserving mean? It means that these vertical arrows are sent to equivalences of categories. The other condition is x0 is a discrete category. And all the single maps designed previously are isomorphism. Okay? Let's uh, try to make sense of this. So, we want to think about X0 as category of objects, discrete category of objects, X1 as category of arrows, 
and xv of 1 is category of weak units. What does it mean to, to ask that the Siegel maps are all isomorphic? It means that we have several category structures internal to count on A and on U. Okay? So we have a semi category in count here, so this is a composition which is associative. And we have a semi functor so a diagram that could be used in the obvious way. What about the preservation of colors? As I already said, preservation of color means the, uh, the arrows the, um, X evaluated that all the arrows with R, which are central identities here, those called vertical arrows, are central equivalences of categories. When it turns out to be the case that these vertical arrows are generated by just these five arrows in a fat delta. So this preservation of color can be reduced to this condition that these five maps are equivalences of categories. So as you see, uh, there are these conditions, one, two, and this condition here, they turn out to be a criterion. So it's not just a concept, it's a criterion to build a fair to category. To build a fair to category, sorry, it's, a, it's enough to say, I give you a diagram of categories that commutes, where so O is a discrete category, and I give you a semi category structure internal to cap on U and A, such that uh, these conditions are satisfied. So these maps are equivalent of categories. So this, this criterion is the starting point to build a fair to category from a weekly global double category. And we can immediately see that some of these data are uh, satisfied. So let's take now a weekly global double category X. What are the obvious choices for uh, the objects? Well, it's the discrete category x zero d. The arrows x one, the weak units x zero, and you immediately have that this diagram commutes. Remember that this is the degeneracy map, and so you see this commutes. Okay, what about these maps being equivalences of categories? Well, remember that x zero is equivalent to x zero d. Immediate from the definition. These maps here are equivalences of categories as a consequence of this third condition in the definition of weekly global double category. This condition here, the induced signal map condition, implies immediately that these five maps are equivalences of categories. So we are almost done, except for one important bit. We need to make sure that X1 and X0 have semi-category structures internal to cut. And a priori, this is not obvious, and it might sound a bit surprising, because cat 2 weekly global red is an order of weak to category. So where do we see a strictly associative composition? So to explain this, I need to backtrack a bit and go back to the theory of weekly global red double categories and totally related notion, which is the one of Sigale pseudo -fanto. So if you have a pseudo-functor from delta up into cut, uh, and look at this diagram, where these are the usual map uh, that you build for, for the Siegel maps for a simplicial object, this would only pseudo-commutes, right? Because it's a pseudo-functor. But if you impose a condition that x0 is discrete, then this diagram strictly commutes, and therefore you can talk about Siegel map. So, we say that the category of Sigali pseudofactor is the <coughs> category of pseudofactor from delta up into cat such that H0 is discrete and all the Sigal maps are isomorphic. So with prop, we have uh, proved there is a close relation between Sigali pseudofactor and weekly global double categories. There is a way to build the Sigali pseudofactor from a weekly global double category that gives you this on the objects, and in a moment I will tell you what happens on maps. And the other way out is the classical strictification factor from pseudo factor into strict factor. It is not an obvious fact, but it is a theorem that the classical strictification actually lets in with the global double categories. <coughs> so let's use the first part to build this <coughs> semi category structure internal to cats on x1 and x0. 
The uh, fundamental observation is that when you take this uh, cigar pseudofanto from the weekly blah 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 category and you restrict to the delta model part, what you find is an actual straight phantom. What does it mean to prove this? Remember that a phantom from delta mono of cat is a semi-simplicial object, so all we need to do is to prove that the semi-simplicial objectives are satisfied. So let's see how this works for two, for two uh, of them here. And how do you build this phantom on maps? I said, I'm going to tell you in a minute. What you do, you need to pre- and post-compose by the new signal maps and their pseudo indices. Remember, the uh, new signal maps are equivalent to categories. The point is that these maps are injectable objects, so when you uh, compose with the pseudo indices, it gives you the identity. So you get a cancellation down here that gives you exactly the same isolation <coughs> identities. Okay, so despite this is a pseudo factor, when you restrict to the delta model of part, it is actually a factor. And that's what gives you the same category structure on x1 and x0 that we were looking for. Yeah? So in the end, we have really built a factor from weekly global and double categories to fair to categories. And you see that this x0, this weak globularity condition, is the one that gives you the weak units in cost model. Now we want to go the other way, from fair to categories to weekly global and double categories. This is technically more involved, so I will only give uh, some of the main ingredients. What we do, we build the cigarette pseudo function from fair to categories, and then we compose with this rectification. This is not immediate, as far as I can see. So this is how this function is defined on objects. That's not surprising. How do you define it on maps, and what is the two-dimensional structure? <coughs> what you want to do is, um, you, if you have a map in delta O, you can see that there are equivalences of categories between these and, um, so if you take x of pi of eta, right, so you have equivalences of categories that satisfy this relation. So you pre and post-compose with these equivalences of categories, and that's how you define uh, the phantom on, um, sorry, I, I, should, I should have said something. So you first, you, you start with the map in that top, you take a lift to fat delta O, and you pre and post compose with these equivalences. But of course, this raises the question, is this well defined? Because you can have more than one lift, yeah? Well, fortunately, you can show that if you choose a different lift, the uh, composites of this, is the same. And this is quite technical. It uh, implies looking carefully to certain properties of the fat delta. Now, what if you have a pair of composable morphisms in delta, in, in delta O? Uh, what do you do here? Well, what you want to do is to say, if I could lift this to a pair of composable morphisms in fat delta O, then we do what we had in the previous slide. But can we do this? Right? This is not obvious. We can lift F1 and F2 separately, but why should the lift be composable in fat delta O? Well, that's a property of uh, the fat delta that you can show any string of composable morphisms lift to a string of composable morphisms. And um, it's one of the places when I recently realized that using the definition of fat delta, the less intuitive definition in terms of uh, epimorphism is special squares is actually useful and makes this proof uh, quite easy because what you do is you show that if you have an epimorphism in delta and a monomorphism here, you can complete this to an actual morphism in fat delta. <coughs> and then if you use this lemma, you say, okay, we have, so we wanted to lift this, uh, say, F1 and F2, etc. You take the epimorphic factorization in delta of these, of each of the maps, Right? So this was F1 and this F2. And then this is what happens. You put the identities here. You use the lemma for this one. You put the identity again, because this is a subjection, a subjection. And you use the lemma again, and you do this. Okay? So these are technical things, but they are non-trivial, and they are essential to build this cigarette pseudofantor out of a fair category. And so in the end, 
I don't have time to tell you the two-dimensional structure, but it's something you can do. You hit this with the stratification, with the uh, new from before, gives you a weekly global double, double category. This gives you a pair of phantom back and forth. And the main theorem is that this pair of phantom induces an equivalence of categories after localization with respect to the two equivalences. I haven't had time to tell you what two equivalences are. It's a standard motion for the Seagull type model, model over the idea of bi equivalence or bi categories. I should say that the proof of this result is non trivial. Uh, so it, it doesn't follow immediately just by the definition of these functors. I don't have time to give you the details. It, it uh, uses, at least the way I have found to prove this, uses a slight uh, generalization of FETO categories at first. And then you get back to having the zigzag, natural zigzag of two equivalences that give you equivalence after localization. So just a, a, a very quick summary of the main points of this talk. So we are looking at two particular <coughs> models of weak to categories, weakly global double categories and fair to categories. I described the direct comparison between them that does not use at all the equivalence of each of these models with by categories. Uh, this result sheds new light on weekly global double categories because it shows that the weak globularity condition is really about the space of weak units. And it relies on some new properties of the Fed delta, for instance, this lifting of composable strings from delta to composable strings in Fed delta. I do believe that the techniques of this work are general enough that it should be possible to carry this on to higher dimension. I'm not claiming it's trivial, but I think uh, there, is, there is a good hope. And if done, this could lead to proof of the same so we'll its conjecture. That's all, thanks very much. However, from the point of view of the modeling of the categories, all these models, also for higher end, are the same. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 